Hello, my name is Mayan Shaw with RVMax.us, and today I have this 2006 Winnebago View model 23H. Now, the 23H model from Winnebago is actually a 2007 variant of this coach, um, but the chassis is a 2006. Now, it has a five-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine um, that's before 2008, so it's got no DEF um, requirements, it's got none of the exhaust uh, EPA requirements, so none of those complications um, that could cause trouble in some of these diesels in 2008 and 2009. Now, the coach is in great condition. We actually just had a few things done to it. We put brand new tires on it, new floors. Um, we're going to talk about that a little more as we continue on. So in the front, um, it's actually free from most rock chips. There's not really anything to speak of up here. A lot of times you'll see rock chips right here on this little lip. Um, but this coach, the front of it's actually in good condition. Now, like I said, it's on a Dodge Sprinter chassis. And that turbo diesel provides a good bit of power and it's also very efficient uh, compared to, you know, especially the gas V10s. Um, diesels are known for having uh, more higher efficiency. Now, it's got a 3,500 pound towing capacity as well. And of course, you have access to the driver and passenger seat. Um, quick access here. So you've got your battery boost button here. You've got a house, you can switch your radio power to house and engine. It's actually a very accessible cab. I'll show you how easy it is to get up in here and just take a step. I mean, it's like getting into an SUV or something. So we'll talk more about the driving position and things like that later on in the video. The door is also shut with a sound of quality, which is I really like. It's like a, if you've ever shut an old um, Porsche 911, like from the 80s, their doors, this is what it feels like and sounds like. It's a very satisfying uh, shot. That's just a little thing I noticed about it. So the cap looks fantastic. By the way, this is a whole fiberglass piece cap. A lot of cheaper um, and competitors to Winnebago do not use fiberglass caps. Um, but this one has a full fiberglass front cap, which is huge because a big problem with these Class C, Class B coaches is their front part will cause, will have a lot of leaks, a lot of delamination, um, but this one has none to speak of because it's a full fiberglass cap. Right here, you've got these storage compartments. Actually, this is not a storage compartment. That's where your propane tank is located. This is on the slide out right here. Another access panel here. All of these doors are really like, I really like the, uh, the locks for them. You just twist um, because some of the doors that you shut and close with a latch, um, some of the older coaches, they start going bad, but these should not really ever go bad unless you somehow damage them. Well, this is your little wet bay area. So this is where you can dump your tanks. Um, you've even got an outside shower here. You can fill up your water tank as well, turn on your water pump. And on the right, you have your 30 amp power cord. Right now, we're actually plugged into a 30 amp shore power service. See, that's all you do is twist and it's locked. That's all, very easy. Well, you notice how clean um, this wall is and you'll really see it on the other side when we see the coach being hit with sun. Now, we actually had our, uh, our body shop guy actually did, he buffed out this coach, because if you've noticed and you've gone to look at um, older Winnebago's from this generation, and you've actually seen them in person, a lot of them will have this little black spiderweb stuff going on in their, in their body, in the fiberglass. Um, but we actually had that all removed, so the exterior of this looks fantastic. It looks almost new, actually. Um, the decals are in great shape. There's no cracking whatsoever, um, which is very surprising. Now, I know Winnebago is a little higher class brand, um, so you'd expect to see some things like that, but most coaches, especially this age, their decals are cracked and a lot of things you'll notice that this coach does not have. Now, like I mentioned earlier, it's got a 3,500 pound towing capacity, which is actually pretty good con considering um, you know, the five cylinder turbocharged engine that's made for efficiency. Right here, we've got a nice little aluminum ladder we're gonna get on the roof here in a minute. You see your backup camera up there on top. 
The caps on this coach look fantastic. No signs of, you know, any damage, any water damage whatsoever. Now we're on the passenger side of this coach. Oh, and this is locked, so I have the keys right here. It's pretty easy to unlock it, it's just... It even has a, uh, a little lock engraved in the metal. I'll show you which way to turn it. <laughs> little storage compartment here. It's actually pretty tall. Right here is where your generator is located. Now it's a propane 3600 Onan generator. Onan is pretty much the standard um, you know, generator for most RVs. Some of them have power techs. Now this actually has an optional feature um, when this thing was new. They spec'd it out with the rear airbag assists for the suspension. Um, what this does is it provides a little more stability um, along with comfort. Most diesel pushers have all airbags, but these, you know, they don't need them so much because they're lighter weight. Um, but this provides more stability going down the road. There's less sway. Now this is the first little flaw I've noticed out here. There's just a little crack right here. That's the only flaw I've seen so far to speak of. Maybe if you bring a uh, magnifying glass, you'll find some more flaws than I can. All right, on the passenger side, you also notice the decals are in excellent condition. Um, they're showing no signs of fading or cracking, um, just like on the driver's side of the coach. Now this is a little Jorah compartment here. Nice little storage compartment. You could probably use this as a cooler as well because there's a drain point down there on the left. Just slides right back in and lock it in place. Now it has a little bit of resistance so it doesn't fly out on you right when you unlock it, um, but you still want to use those main locks right there. All right, you see it's got an electric step, a, t a double electric step on top of that. Now I've got the keys in here, I just want to grab that so I can unlock this little compartment right here. And they go in and out automatically, obviously, when you close the door. Now, you can flick the switch off, so when you're camping, they'll stay out, which is probably an advisable thing to do. A little storage compartment under here. This looks like this is underneath your, uh, your dinette area. So these are seat belts for your dinette. And also serves as a storage compartment, accessible from the inside as well as outside. Now, here's the passenger side door. Same setup as the driver, although it's a little easier to get in here because you don't have the steering wheel. See the set right here? Very easy to get in and out of this coach. Again, the coach looks fantastic. Um, the exterior is in excellent condition, especially since we had it buffed. Um, the fiberglass caps look great. And this does have a one-piece fiberglass roof as well. That's standard for Winnebago. You also have this very nice patio, patio awning here. What you do is just roll it out and put these stands down. So you can adjust this if you'd like. So if the sun is over there and you want a little better angle, you can have this very low, um, you know, set it up like that or have it even higher than it is right now. Um, and the condition is fantastic. This is built by Horizon and you know, the fabric is in excellent condition. No tears, no cracks, no holes, anything like that, no fading. Um, and that's actually the fading is a huge part of the design because this is um, when it's put up, it's covered by the aluminum. So it's the, the fabric, um, not a single bit of the fabric is exposed to the UV light that is very damaging. All right, let's take a step inside this coach. All right, we're up on the roof now. Like I mentioned, it's got a one piece fiberglass roof. Um, and then the front cap, this entire piece is a molded fiberglass piece, which is really nice. Now you've got a sunlight here. This is for the front bed. It's actually a beautiful little sunlight. There's also you know, a little um, blackout screen for it if you'd like. But the roof is in excellent condition. All the seals look good. The air conditioner is running right now. This is a vent for your refrigerator. You've got your antenna right there. This is your rear bathroom area. So that's a little skylight for your shower. You've got a vent fan or a vent right here. 
Roof looks excellent. Rear main seal looks good. No signs of warping or anything like that. A lot of times on coaches that have had problems with water in the past, um, you'll see very crappily done seals. And yes, I just used the word crappily. But the seals will be terribly done right here because it looks like it started leaking in there and stuff started happening and somebody just tried to throw a quick seal on it. But this seal looks excellent, looks professionally done. Um, so the condition of the roof is excellent. All right, let's get back down and continue on. All right, now we're on the interior of this coach. and It's actually got a lot of space in here considering it's only 23 feet. Um, now, we're going to start over here. This is a nice little spacious couch. Um, the, the cushions are pretty nice. Um, they're firm. They're kind of in, in the middle of being firm um, and soft and cushiony. So this is perfect because this turns into a bed. So you just pull it out, place it flat, quick and easy. Let's push it back like that. Now, this used to have uh, carpet in here. So we actually took the carpet out. We put this uh, waterproof, um, it's like a laminate type flooring. It looks like hardwood. And our guys did a great job. They did all the nice trim work. Um, looks great, easy to clean. It's what should be in here uh, for a little coach like this. You're gonna be in and out of it a lot. Now let's move on to the kitchen area. We've got a nice big stainless sink here. It's a cover that fits in nicely. This is a snug fit, so it's not gonna sit here and rattle a lot. All right, so you've actually got a good bit of counter space here. A lot of storage, There's a whole lot of storage in this coach. Um, this could be a little pantry area here. Now, all of the doors are like a European style uh, door, so you pull them out. Um, so when you're camping, you can have them all out like this, so you can just quickly, and there's a little bit of resistance that keeps them in there. Um, so even if you're on a slightly unlevel spot, it's not gonna fly open. But then to keep them locked while going down the road, you just press them in like that. You've got a three burner gas stove over here, on top of which is a little convection microwave oven. big drawer down here lots of drawers over there now right here is your control center for your coach so you've got your you can test your tanks you can start your generator turn your water heater on um, and this actually has a propane or electric uh, water heater it's a good electric element in the, uh, the water heater so that's nice if you're plugged into power um, you can save on propane um, the generator only has 35 hours on it. it's a super low generator up there is your slide out control now back here is where your bathroom area is You've got your toilet there, um, shower over here. Step in the shower to show you how much space. Uh, so I'm about 5'11", I'm probably like average height. Um, so there's still about, I can't tell, maybe about a foot or so. Yeah, but a foot of space above me. Um, the width is decent too, so I'm in here, I can be comfortable and take a shower. Um, so this is, if you're about my size, that shower is plenty of space. Right here we've got a little sink, again stainless. That's where your toilet paper is, and there's a good bit of storage in there as well. And there's like a little plastic covering, that may be aftermarket, over the carpet. Uh, so if you spill something in there, it's not gonna go into your carpet. A little mirror here, medicine cabinet space. There's also an outlet right here, so if you use an electric toothbrush or something, uh, you got an outlet right there, it's perfect. We've got a little wardrobe here too. Actually a decent sized wardrobe. And it's got an automatic light too that comes on as soon as you open the cabinet. And there's a little easy to, act, easy to move door. So all you do to unlock it, because right now it's locked in place obviously so it won't slide out. You just push this down and it's open. That's it. And it's locked in place there. So again, to open it up, you push it down and it clicks back in place. Again, I've said this on all my other videos, this is my favorite type of slide-in door. Please, manufacturers, if you're watching, put these in, these are fantastic. Over here, this could be, again, a little pantry space. Um, it's pretty deep, too, and these are all, all of these are adjustable. Now we've got a, our refrigerator here made by Norcold. It can run off of either 110 electric power or propane gas. These use are actually pretty efficient on the, if you use propane, they're pretty efficient. They don't use that much propane. Um, it actually it has a gas um, heater as well as an electric uh, heat pump, I believe, because it says electric heat on there. It may not be a heat pump. 
It may be like a little element it has in the air conditioning system, but it has furnace, uh, gas furnace that is ducted through the floor. All right here we have our dinette area. This also turns into a bed. So this piece down here will go down and it becomes flat. You got a little TV right here. You've got outlets as well as a car charging port right there. So it's like a 12 volt car charging port. You've got your speaker system up here, you can tell. Now that speaker system can run, uh, can be connected to your TV and there's a switch or you can connect them to your radio. So if you wanna turn up the music and get loud in here, you can. Right here, um, again, like I mentioned, there's actually a decent amount of space here and the coach becomes a little taller over here in this area. Right here, we have a bed. Comes down pretty easily. And it actually stays up there on its own because it's got shocks, but it's got extra little um, straps to hold it in just in case. You just pull it down. You have a little ladder. You might want to back up. This ladder goes on like this and then swings down. Um, then you can climb up into bed. You've got, sorry, <laughs> the, the sun was in my eye. So you've got this beautiful little skylight here. That's actually a good bit of space. You've got windows on either side. Um, and like I mentioned when I was on the roof, you can just quickly cover, um, you know, make it a little darker if you'd like. Obviously, if you want, you can make it completely dark. Um, because, believe, yeah, see that? So if you want a slight cover, you can go from that side. And if you want it to be blacked out essentially, go from that side. So really nice little area. and actually provides a lot of light in here. So I'm gonna leave that open. All you do is put this ladder up again. Put it on top. And that's it. Now let's step, well I'm gonna put this here just in case. I don't trust air shocks. <laughs> All right, let's step into the cockpit area here. So um, it's got a very quick, almost non-existent weight to start when you start it up. It's a very small little five cylinder, 2.7 liter turbo engine. Like I said, very efficient. You got a five speed automatic. Here's your control right here. You got a 12 volt connection. You turn your traction control off. Um, you can lock, unlock your doors. Um, this thing drives very nicely, very smooth. Emergency brakes over here, very comfortable. Um, it's a very European styled motorhome all around, which I really like. And the quality by Winnebago on the conversion is fantastic. Let's go get this thing out on the road and give you my feedback on it. All right, we've gotten on the highway now with this coach. I'm gonna turn the air conditioning down. This thing has a lot of torque, uh, plenty of torque for this coach. So I'm at like 50% throttle. I'm already up to 50 miles an hour, 55. 60, I'm still at like 40, 50% throttle, 65. This thing has plenty of power, a uh, lot of torque. Let's see if I can figure out cruise control here. Oh, there it is set. But I have to slow down because I'm behind someone. <laughs> Get around them. It's very easy to drive this coach. So, right there, cruise control set. And I'm behind another slow person. <laughs> well, it drives very, very well. Um, it's easy to drive and just set. Um, it feels more like a car. A lot of Class C's and B's are really, you know, they do a lot of this swaying movement. Uh, and this one does not do much of that at all. And it's very easy to set. I'm just, I got the steering wheel set where I want it. It goes dead straight. Very easy, going around the corner now, so I'm gonna grab it. Now you can manually shift the transmission if you need to. So you go down, up. Um, if you wanna keep it in a certain gear, you, you certainly can. But it's very easy to drive. Like I said, plenty of torque, plenty of power. Um, it's only got 31,000 miles on it too. This five cylinder is very nice. These, uh, they had a lot of problems with the, um, the six cylinders when they came out with them. I think it was 08 that came out with them. They had the DEF um, and then they had like something in the exhaust, some new stuff in electronics they had some problems with. Um, so the five cylinder is a fantastic motor.
and this thing drives very nicely. No pooling at all. The road noise is not bad. The coach noise is not bad at all either. A lot of times you'll get coaches that are very rattling interiors, and this one I hear nearly, the only noise I hear is the, the air going by. Yeah, this thing drives excellently. All the indicators are very satisfying to operate. Um, they're not, they, they feel very well built. Uh, when you flick, you know, especially the, uh, the cruise control, because it's a little tiny little stick. Um, and it, it feels very well built every time you operate it. There we go, that's how you disengage cruise control. Yeah, the signal stall feels great. This thing drives very nicely. All right, here's a good brake test. Yeah, brakes feel very good. They feel like car brakes. And what I mean by that is sometimes you get in motorhomes and you'll press the brakes and they feel sort of like car brakes, but it does not stop <laughs> like car brakes. This feels like it's how it's, it's like, it feels like a van. Like you get in it, it's not, it doesn't feel too heavy. Um, so it just comes to a stop quite easily. Brakes are not overworked at all, like they are in some other coaches. This thing drives very well. You can barely hear the engine right now, it's idling. Anyways, I'm gonna continue repeating myself. So let's do some highlights real quick. We got the new floors, waterproof flooring. Um, the tires are brand new. It's only got 31,000 miles, 35 hours on the generator, which is an Onan. Um, we had the exterior buffed, so the exterior looks excellent. It looks really well. The driving of it is very nice. Very nice indeed. The Sprinter chassis is excellent. We've got that option, optional uh, air air assist, air suspension assist on the uh, the back rear suspension. So the sway is minimal, and it just sets. It goes dead straight. I've got my backup camera right here, and this backup camera also has a microphone. So if someone's back there talking to you, you can hear them coming through this little monitor, and it makes plenty of power. And the engine is super quiet. I mean, we're sitting right on top of the engine and it sounds like a car. Like you get in a car and this is what a car would sound like when you're revving it up to get on the highway. Plenty of power and torque and the gas mileage is excellent. Let me see if I can flip through this and find the gas mileage that's getting. I'm not sure. Yeah, it doesn't say. But I, I would highly consider you to look it up online. I, uh, I can maybe throw an X or I'll look it up when we get back and throw it in the, in, the, in, the, in the video. All right, kill it. Yeah, so I looked on the brochure. Um, actually, I had my camera person look on the brochure. This thing makes um, a claimed 17 to 19 miles per gallon, which is fantastic um, when you think about it. 17 to 19, if you're getting 17 to 19 miles a gallon in this coach, you're doing excellent. Um, and that's what it's supposed to get. That's super efficient for an RV, especially with this kind of power, because it's got plenty of power. Um, I believe that's a 2.7 liter, uh, I think it's a Mercedes five cylinder diesel. Runs great. And this thing drives super well. I mean, it sits down, it sticks to the road, there's no swaying, or there's, there's swaying, but there's minimal swaying compared to other RVs of, of this uh, stature. So anyways, that'll complete the video for today. Um, this is an excellent little coach, super clean, and it's ready to go. We've already tested all the systems, um, so this thing is ready to go camp right now. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned to see more clean coaches that we get in. Thank you.